get the right tools for the job because they're going to make you money and they're going to be more efficient and you're going to save on labor and it's going to be planted correctly so you can year after year as you get better at using them and you're keeping good records then you know how much money you can make off of one bed so how many beds of carrots should i you know how much money do i need to make off of carrots to make my end goal and do it and you like have consistency because the tools are consistent you're consistent with your record keeping um, hopefully your sales are consistent and you know how much money you can make in it so you can actually calculate a living off of farming. We are planting carrots today and we just pulled off our silage tarp. It's been on there for a little over two weeks. It's springtime here on Olson Mountain, so ideally you can leave the silage tarp on um, this time of year for three to four weeks, but because of time constraints, we do what we can. The purpose of the tarp is to germinate all of the weed seeds and then kill them off because it blocks them from sun. So that's what Kevin's doing in the background. He's using our five torch flame weeder to go ahead and kill off the remaining weeds. You really wanna get your carrot beds right because they take a long time to germinate. They are in the beds for a long period of time and you really don't want those tiny carrot plants to be competing with weeds. So it's really important to prep your beds the right way to make sure that you can get rid of that first wave of germination. We found the best way to seed our carrots is to use the Jang Precision Seeder. You can set it for the exact basing that you want and it pretty much does that. So you can calculate exactly how much seed you want per bed and set your Jang accordingly and you know that you have the right amount of seed in the bed and then it's just a matter of keeping them wet and prepped well so they germinate. So I look back in my seeding book um, I have two years of seeding history in here, everything that we seed. I have the date we seeded it, the settings that we use on the Jang, the amount of seed by weight that we've used, and then we can take notes um, at the end of the season, like good seeding rate, we had you know, the quantity that we wanted per bed. So that's why I keep notes. Last year we had a great carrot harvest, so I'm just gonna use the same setting. So looking back, just almost a year ago on the nose. We did three types of carrots, which we're gonna do again, yayas, mokums, and hercules. And the settings are a little bit different, but we'll change it per seed. So I'm gonna start with yayas, and we're gonna use a seed roller. And the other thing about the jing is everything comes apart. It's really easy to make changes. Um, so we just bring this our seeding tote into the field. It has our scale, it has all of our rollers, it has everything, it has our notebook, it has our tiny pencil, all the things that we need to make sure um, that we can record while we're seeding in the field. Lots of little screws and you wanna keep them all clean so we have this nice little container that's also our scale holder that we can put all of those things in. Pop MJ24 in there close her back up okay and then it says that I have there's sprockets right in here that determine the spacing so the setting I had last year was rear 10 and front 14 I can look right on the cedar itself to see what my settings should be so we're using a 24 hole roller and our settings say rear 10 front 14 so rear 10 front 14 with a 24 hole we're doing one inch spacing for our yayas. It's a kind of a nice little case just to put all your things in. We really want to keep the inside of this clean and dirt free. If there does happen to get any dirt in, I'll take it over to the shop and blow it out with the compressor. Um, but so far we've done a good job of keeping it clean. So I'm going to change the sprockets in here. So I choose to do it um, one sprocket at a time so I don't actually ever have to take the chain out and put it in the ground and have risk of it getting dirty. I just try to leave it right in place. Rear 10, front 14. Those go back in there. 
This goes back together, screwed on. I like that everything you need for the Jang is pretty much on the tool itself or fits in just a tiny little travel tote. We're going to test how many seeds drop per full rotation of this sprocket and then put the hopper back in the Jang and then see how far it goes in one rotation so we can measure how many seeds per foot it's dropping or how many seeds per inch in this case. So I have my Yaya seeds loaded up and I have one of the teeth on my sprocket marked and I have it lined up with this line here because that for me that's the easiest thing to line it up to. And I'm going to spin it one full rotation, count the number of seeds that have dropped, do it a few times so we can get an average. In my experience you have to really make sure that your um, pelleted seeds stay moist. It's even harder because you have to get that ceramic coating to dissolve and then for the seed itself to get moisture in order to germinate. But it's worth it. They're a little more expensive um, but because you can really use a precision seeder and you know how many seeds you're dropping it's worth it to us to get the pelletized seeds. Okay we're gonna say 20 we're gonna say 20 seeds in one full rotation based on that test. The other thing I love about the Jang is that you can just take the hopper off the seeder and dump it right back into your seed container where some of the other seeders you're like trying to maneuver it and it's awkward. So now I'm putting the Jang, the hopper back in. I'm going to go back to my starting mark. The other way to just make sure you know you dropped enough seed is to weigh your seed vessel before and after. So all of our yaya seeds are in there. I'm weighing the entire thing. So in my notebook, I'm putting them direct seeding. We're in zone six yayas. And I write down my settings. And then I'll weigh it again when I'm done. And you can usually find how much weight per pound your seeds are. This is from high mowing seeds. It doesn't have the weight on it, but Hercules is another variety that we're planting. And it says right on there, there's 19,250 seeds per pound. So you can figure out how much weight, do all the calculations, how many seeds dropped in your beds, and then, you know, eventually get to how many seeds per inch or how many carrots you'll end up with at the end of the season. So I'm all set to start my yaya planting and my beds are prepped, been covered for a little over two weeks, weeds burned off and now we just have to plant and water. Cover and remay and hope for the best. <laughs> so we have 30 inch beds and we can fit five rows of carrots with the jang in each of our 30 inch beds. <laughs> 